Every nine days, an accident shuts down one of the busiest interstates in the state of Florida. And if you travel I-75, chances are you've been caught in one of these shutdowns. And unfortunately, it won't get better anytime soon. In part one of our semi safe series, 10 investigates uncovered that a portion of I-75 will become chronically congested by the year 2020. And it's a problem the state has looked at for years. So the next time you hit the road, will you be safe? Jarrett was the light in everybody's life. He was the person that when he walked into a room, the room lit up with not just his smile, but his energy. He was the most giving, loving person I've ever had the privilege of knowing and the honor of calling my son for 25 years. Look into the eyes of Jarrett Tereskin. His mom says in every picture, you can tell by his eyes the gentle, kind soul he had. He was kind to strangers. If he had $5 left and you needed $5, he would give you that $5 and not think for a second about it. Gentle to his mom. He always held my hand. He was a 25 year old grown man and I was still his mama. <laughs> Instead of getting to hold his hand now, I have to hold a piece of metal that has his thumbprint on it. Jared was on his way home from Gainesville, July 14th, 2017. A few miles from his Wildwood exit, traffic came to a halt because of an earlier accident. When he didn't arrive home when his family expected him, they jumped in a car to trace the route he would have taken. When they got on I-75. There were so many police cars and ambulances, it looked like daylight. According to this accident report, an out of control semi ran into the back of Jarrett's car. My son had to run back and tell me that it was my Jared. <laughs> and I just laid there on the ground. I don't know for how long. It is a stretch of road on I-75 that is no stranger to accidents. Jared's crash was the second deadly wreck on the interstate in less than 12 hours. That stretch of road is no stranger to transportation officials either. Tom Byron, an engineer with the Florida Department of Transportation. Three, four years ago, you guys realized that we had a problem here. Yeah, we've realized it for a while, but in corridor development takes a long time. 10 investigates found four years before Jarrett's death, FDOT published a concept study recommending more planning and another study for a portion of I-75 from Hernando to Columbia counties. The focus, increasing safety and looking at congestion concerns north of Wildwood. That's why the I-75 Relief Task Force was formed. It cost taxpayers $400,000. That report was published October 1st, 2016. In that stretch of road, on average, once every nine days, one, one direction is fully closed for an incident. That's what the department calls a failure. In the task force's final report, they worried that parts of I-75 could fail by 2020. We spoke to task force member Matt Surency. If you travel that at some points, you would probably think that it's already failing now. Failing. So what does that mean? The Florida Department of Transportation defines it as a loss of service, meaning that all lanes are shut down because of an accident or congestion. It's, it's from the user's perspective, this ain't working like it's supposed to. What's been done? to make that stretch of road safer. Short ter term and that in that report would be the operational improvements. Those short term improvements the task force recommended were digital roadway signs, road rangers, service patrol, and more cameras that alert officials quicker when there's an accident. FDOT says those have all been implemented. You know, one of the main things we're trying to put a dent in is secondary crashes. 20% and I can't remember if it's 20% of the crashes or 20% of the fatalities are secondaries. So, so all this stuff, the faster we can see it, react to it, clean it up, let people know, then we can have an impact on that kind of stuff. That's what we're shooting for operationally. So we're still seeing these accidents. Yep. More needs to be done. And that's, for DOT, that's a hard part. Byron says they are trying to figure out more solutions. He says the goal is to find a way to clear up accident scenes quicker. 
The Georgia Department of Transportation plans to build commercial vehicle only lanes on I-75 in central Georgia to reduce traffic congestion and improve safety for motorists around the Atlanta area. Building these types of lanes in Florida was one of the suggestions made by the I-75 Relief Task Force. But the most recent report published by FDOT in 2017 says a suggestion like this is not feasible. We wanted to know why. So you're looking at truck only lanes, express lanes, or more general use lanes? Or, or all the above. All could of the be, above. Or it could be any, that, all that gets determined in those studies. Even if it's not being built, to at least see the, the planning stages of it and seeing what we're going to generate out of it and not create more committees just to get some kind of answer that, that may basically fits into the line of what you're wanting. Another study, another deadly accident. A 18 wheeler heading northbound, crossed over the rail into the southbound lane and took out everybody. Seven people killed on that stretch of road in January, five of them children in a church van heading to Disney. Is that even more of a wake-up call that something needs to be done here? I don't think we need more of a wake-up call. I don't think there's anybody in DOT that needs a wake-up call that there's, there's, there's a need. Actually, there's, the need far exceeds what we've got the capability to do. These accidents yeah. continue to happen. What do you say? It's the, we're not legally allowed to just go, oh, okay, there's a problem, start paving. It doesn't work that way. It, it, federally requirements, state requirements. I don't get on I-75. I will not drive on I-75. For Lisa Tereskin, she says somebody has to figure out what to do so no more lives on this stretch of road are lost. I don't have knowledge on what they're doing, but all I can say is if they see this, this is not a statistic. My son's life is not just another statistic. He was a living breathing, loving light in this world. And when these accidents occur and people are killed, it changes their families' lives forever. Don't look at these individuals who have died on the roadway as just statistics and another number in a book. But is it just roadway improvements that need to be done to keep you safe the next time you're behind the wheel? New numbers out show that deadly crashes are on the rise when they involve this certain type of vehicle. What we've uncovered tomorrow night in part two, semi-safe.